In the last video, we used the command window to calculate the trajectory of a ball fired from the ground. In this video, we're going to do the same thing by means of a script. To create a script, you click on this button here, New Script. And that puts us into the editor. When we finish the script, it might be some time before we come back to it. It's always a good idea to put comments in a script to remind you at a later time what the script was about. So we're going to start our script with a statement of the problem. A ball is projected into the air and so on. I've also listed Newton's equations here and I've noted that the initial velocity u is split into two components, ux and uy. The next thing to do is to declare all the variables to do with the analytical part of the problem. So we've got ux and uy, we've got g, we've got t is time, and we have x and y, which are two vectors that hold the position of the ball as it flies through the air. The next block are the variables we need to do the calculations. The first one is time of flight. The time taken for the ball to go from the ground to the highest point can be found by v equals u plus at. The initial velocity u is uy and the final velocity v is zero. We know that a is the acceleration due to gravity, so the only unknown is time, which is the time from launch to the highest point. So t is equal to u divided by g and the time back down to the ground again is going to be the same. So time of flight is 2 times ui divided by g. We've chosen 20 to be the number of time increments we take during the flight, um, so we divide the time of flight by 20 to get the time increment. So as long as time is less than the time of flight, we increment time, calculate the position, and then go around again, and we carry on until time is equal to or greater than the flight time. And each of these statements here um, we're extending the vector by one element each time we go through the loop. And then the final thing we want to do is to plot our results. At the moment our script is in memory, it's not saved on disk. And when we press the run button, MATLAB will want to save the file. When we click run, we'll be asked to give a file name. So we'll call this lesson two. And here in the command window you can see that the program is run and here is our result. Now if you look at it, we start at zero and we finish at somewhere and if we look at the data, we'll type y in the command window, that's the listing of the data, there's the 21st point which is back to zero and there's the 22nd point which implies that the ball is now underground, 2.4 meters underground. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of logic into the loop here that says if the y distance is negative don't bother recording it. So now if ut plus a half a t squared which is what this is in effect is greater than or equal to zero we record it otherwise we don't record it. So now we'll run the program again and this time the ball goes up into the air and then comes back down again. And that's the end of lesson two. In lesson three, we'll consider what happens after the ball hits the ground. 